Uh-huh. All right. Going live, and it ain't no jive. Coming at you with a uh, with a look at something that I got to say I'm, at the moment, impressed with. Uh, we tried to look at this Thursday night, and the uh, platform just wasn't having it from a technical aspect, but uh, hopefully we're going to have better luck today. And I tell you what is having it from a technical aspect, this little Space Invaders unit. This is the neatest little thing. Why? I mean, it looks just like those other MSI ones that we reviewed on the show that came much later, right? But no, this is a Jack Specific machine. I mean, that's not like it's synonymous with being a Cadillac or anything, but compared to those other units, it is. And Gen X Grown Up is here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Gen X John to the scene. This thing is so nice. Oh, the clickiness of the joystick. Now, if you remember those MSI units we looked at had these big old wonky things that, you know, they didn't really click into place. And it was hard to tell just how much feel you were getting in there, just how dialed in the responsiveness was going to be. Just didn't feel right. This feels like an actual arcade joystick. And the buttons are very clicky, too. So it's got that going for it. We really should have just done a review on this and done a close-up look. And it wouldn't have been the first one that's been done, but, I, you know, these are 10 years old now. It's been a minute since we've looked at these. We were scheduled to start at 4, but we've got a few minutes here. So I want to take a few minutes while some people get in here to take a look at the technical aspects of this. We've got the light-up coin door, which actually acts as the reset button. That's cool. I don't know, I'm just impressed with the quality. The heft is there. The heft is there. Big John Phillips is in the house. I knew you were going to be here, my man. Thanks so much for dropping in on us. Glad to have you here. Uh, this has got a good playlist on it. It's all Taito stuff. Bubble Bobble, Legend of Kage, The Space Invaders, I'm afraid, is the one, uh, John, uh, Gen X John, that you don't care for. The one that they brewed up to sidestep licensing. The one we later saw on the uh, At Games units, and we'll, uh, we'll verify that when we get into it. But, uh, you know, it's what it is. You know, Kage looks like the arcade port. Bubble Bobble is too. And we got a couple, you know, I'm not going to say lesser known. I mean, you've heard of Kicks, Puznik's, Chack and Pop. Two-Bit, I don't really remember. And Birdie King and Alpine Ski don't really ring a bell. But a couple of these. And Fairyland Story, I don't recall that one. But love the font. I'm sure there's fun to be had there too. So, again, before, while we're waiting on a couple people to show up, and any of you dropping back in after the fact, and, you know, you see this on the recap, make sure that you subscribe to the MC Murder Show and drop a like on this video because if we get enough likes on the video and make sure that other people can see the video, that's going to help the visibility and make sure that people out there know that this is a quality plug-and-play, all of which are still available on eBay, you know, but, you know, they're up around 30 bucks, some of them, but for the quality I'm seeing here, I wouldn't mind collecting more of these. Marilyn Monroe Rover has joined us. Welcome, Marilyn. Oh, hi, indeed. This was in it. Now, this was sealed. It was brand new, but this was slid into the plastic there. It's a uh, Radio Shack receipt. And uh, this was bought for 15 bucks after a $10 Radio Shack coupon in Henderson, North Carolina. I mean, uh, it's just funny to look at. In 2013. But these were made in, I think, 2011, 2010. So they're almost a decade old. Transmit Code has joined us. Welcome, Transmit. Glad to have you guys here on this special live stream edition on the MC Merch Show. You know, and it's Saturday, so I figured it'd be as good a day as any to get back on this and try to take a look at it. But what was sad about this unit to me is it was sealed. Somebody gave this as a gift and someone didn't want it. They never opened it. It was just, oh, thanks, Grandma. Hmm. And, you know, 10 years ago, even, I guess there probably wasn't a lot of incentive to rip this thing open. Whereas now, I think... You make these things, and there's all kind of YouTubers collecting them and reviewing them and stuff like that. It's like it was just a little before its time, yet it's better quality than anything we'd probably see now. I'm so surprised at the durability and the uh, of the controls there. It's nostalgia. Welcome, Taylor. So glad to have you here, my friend. You are the man with the master plan. And yeah, let's get let's get into this. I believe it is. Yeah, we're we're a minute in, so we're ready to take a look. I think we're looking at Legend of Kage first, but man, it's going to be good. Cheers from Philadelphia, indeed. I've always wanted to go to Philadelphia, not just for the cheesesteaks, but I got to get a picture with that Rocky statue someday. And I can't just go to it. I've got to start out in the train yards and run all the way there. It wouldn't be the same thing, but yeah, Philly is such a neat city. I don't travel nearly enough. All right. Legend of Kage, let's get in 
to this. Oh, I love the clickiness, and yes, you're going to hear it. I heard somebody say one time, it bothers me that you can hear the clicks of your controls on your stream. It's like, well, I'm sorry, but for me, it's almost like an ASMR thing. Arcade button clicks are never going to bother me. Oh, what a screen tear in there. I don't know. You know, I never played Kage in the arcade, so I don't have much to compare it to. This game I was introduced to on the NES, and woo. It's a tough one. It is a dadgum tough one. Taito 1 and 2 collection for the PS2, which are great collections, John, no doubt. I've got one of them. Legends 2 I've got. I don't have the... Uh, I need the first one still. No, I do have the first one. I've got the first one on Xbox. That's why I don't see it there. It's on the other shelf. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Elevator action didn't make... You can question some of what they put on here. You know, maybe they aren't, you know... Maybe they aren't the choices they should have made. But there's always a little bit of licensing that comes into play there that I think is the reason that it doesn't happen. And, you know, that's not really ours to know, I guess. But we can certainly speculate about it and have fun. Ash Can has joined us. Welcome, Ash. Always glad to have you on the stream. This game was so tough. I like, murderously tough. You had your little sword dealy. And it's definitely tough playing in this... Uh, Oh, God, I went, went right into a star. And I'm not going to blame the controls. Controls are solid. I'm uh, obviously going to be rusty at this. You don't just show up and play Kage. It's not going to happen. you got to really train on this. I was never good at it back in the day, even on NES. I just loved it, though. You can get the weapon upgrades, or you can die in five seconds like I did, but this is great. We're going to be doing it. Clicks are good. Captain Retro is here. Captain's out scoring like he always does. You're going to hear a can open here because I like to stay hydrated. I'm not going to tell you what Captain got, but you can bet because he's king of pickups, it's going to be something good. We've also got a collaborative effort coming up with me and the Captain on something, continuing... Uh, on a series that's done quite well on the show, and I'm very excited about that. Always great things going on here in the show, but due to the sensitive nature of the subject, I can't speculate about it on the air. You're just going to have to wait and see for yourself what happens. It's going to just be that intense that we got to keep it a secret. Secrets are good, though. It's nice to have stuff to look forward to. Then the big ninja comes out, and you got to drop him on his keister. There he is. Wadaga! Eat it. I thought the red guy had the power up. Somebody has the power up. Oh no, we no no you don't. You're going down. Ah. Don't think elevator action has turned up on much. And yeah, and again, there may be a very good reason for that. Some of these games, you know, are properties that, you know, more than one company holds a license on or for whatever reason they just can't, you know, they can't offer it, but Or they're locked into certain versions of something that are not the versions that we really want. Eat it. Got him. There's a Legend of Kage 2 on the DS. Honestly, I did not know that. That is fascinating. I'll have to look for that. And I pride myself on knowing a lot about the wilder things that came out on DS because, you know, working at GameStop for a few years, you see all kinds of stuff come, get traded in from people from all walks of life, all, fans of all different genres, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, I've seen stuff on that that's like, oh my god, this exists? But I gotta admit, I did not know there was a Kage on the DS. That's fascinating. This reminds me somewhat of Ninja Spirit. It'll also remind you somewhat of Demon Sword, which is kind of a spiritual successor to this on the NES. If you haven't played it, I recommend it for two reasons. One, because it's a good game. But two, because it's a lot easier than this. Uh, and, and, you know, easiness isn't necessarily a reason to play the game. But, you know, you can beat it in a sitting and you'll have fun doing it. Same play style, same type of game. And, boy, this game just is born to whoop your butt. No, I haven't finished Last of Us 2 yet. Uh, probably tonight. I can't be far from being done. I'm 25 hours in. And a lot of people are like, oh, I beat it in 19 hours. It's like, man, it, it ain't a race. Uh, I'd say if you beat it that fast, you probably missed a lot. Because there's a lot you could miss. And there's a lot of stuff I found in that game. And again, no spoilers. I'm not done. But there's a lot I found in that game that was like, oh, man, I bet you nobody found this. Or I bet a lot of people did not go in here. Or, you know, I've just... I've spent a lot of time fleshing out 
every area. Because we learned in the first Last of Us, if you don't do that, you know, you're going to be hurting for resources once you get where you're going. Oh, I hit him and it put me on a tree. But yeah, you're going to be hurting for resources. My second playthrough of the first Last of Us, I breezed through that blindfolded. I mean, by the time I got to the end, I walked in like Hank Scorpio with a flamethrower and just dropped everyone. It was just like, oh, man. And before you get in there with like two slugs left in your pistol and you're like, oh, God, this is going to be horrible. Trying to take on the last enemies with a shiv and get out of there because you have no ammunition. But uh, de definitely game of the year for anybody still on the fence about Last of Us 2 and reading reviews and thinking, oh, maybe it's not that good. Oh, my God. It is outstanding. A greater narrative, a greater story may never have existed in a game. I don't know. It's just, I'm loving it. The Ouya is not coming along. And Ashcan, who is in the chat right now, just commented on the video. And he made a very good point. If you could get this thing to work, you could probably fly a space shuttle. I mean, there's so many other things you could do that would be more worth your time. Modding a Wii. Modding a Vita. Jailbreaking a 3DS. You know, it's like... And you knew, you know what you would be getting if you did those things. Now, we have no idea what the Ouya is going to do, even if we can get past the uh, the update screen, because there's going to be software we can put on it, but then there's a compatibility factor. So, The new Super Hot Mind Control Delete that just came out is a great evolution of the first one. You're going to have to catch me up on that, John. I don't know what that is. John, I thought of you yesterday. My wife bought me a t-shirt and it said Rubik's Cross Pac-Man. And it was Pac-Man and Rubik's Cube art all over the front of it. And I was like, I don't know what this is from, but I know John would be into it. All right, one more try and then we'll move on to another game. Big Retro Show is here. Welcome, BR. Hope that you are doing well and feeling well, my friend. So great to see you on this special Saturday edition of TNL. So I guess this is... And this isn't night, really, so it's SDL, Saturday Day Live. But then that's redundant, so it'd just be Saturday Live. So this should just be SL. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. But yeah, Thursday wasn't having it, man. We tried to go live. I mean, YouTube Studio is just such a mess. And, you know, OBS is always a mess. But you put two messes together, and guess what you get? A bigger mess. If you stream every day, great. And you're probably going to have less problems because you do that, because everything stays updated. It doesn't have a chance to get out of whack. But the problem that we were having wasn't even one of an update issue. It was just, you know, we're constantly having to update stream keys and all that to keep these two pieces of software, these two applications, talking to one another. And even when you do that, sometimes the wires get crossed. And, you know, there's constantly driver issues with blue mics on uh, Windows 10. We were running into that. OBS doesn't want to read it. It's not the mic's fault. It's, the again, the application just not talking to it. My mic has always worked just fine. But, yeah, one thing after another, and then it wasn't even streaming to the platform anymore. They have the Stream Now application. So you're streaming to an application within the platform. And if that gets detached, then you're just streaming into Limbo. So y'all are all sitting there waiting in the stream link while I'm streaming somewhere else, and it's just ridiculous. So I just had to call it. Live on Saturday, LSD. You could call it that. Yeah, the clicking, and I pro you know, I probably shouldn't be doing it right there in the dadgum microphone, but, so, sorry for your ears. But, again, it speaks to the quality of these Jack Pacific's units. And, of course, being a unit like this, this is not the only one they made. There is a Pac-Man one, and I don't know what else is on it, but it was, it's likely a collection like this. Probably more of your, you know, better-known Namco stuff. I'm sure Galaxian stuff like Galaga's on there. But it makes me want to get them for the quality, because we tried the MSI ones. We reviewed them. We got them for next to nothing, so it was fun to do. Had a pretty good response to it here on the show as well on those reviews. But... Um, yeah, they, they just weren't the highest quality machines out there. And oh my god, that's a long fall. But this is not half bad. It really isn't. And I lied. I'm going to play one more game of this. Um, the clickiness of the joystick. Again, it's not this big old honking thing that doesn't click when moved into position. It does do that. And it you really feel like it's 
responding to you. You know that it's uh, it's in sync. It's it's dialed in. And again, these are just fun to see what's on them. When I walked into that consignment shop, you know, it said eight bucks on it, and I was like, you know, that's probably about right. And actually, it was undercutting it by a good bit. This plug and play, oh, excuse me, it's worth about thirty bucks on a good day. But she took six for it, and yeah. Next time we go up yonder, I'm going to drop in there again because that seems like a place that just takes stuff in and it just gets thrown in a pile in the back. And they didn't mind me digging through all of it. And while there wasn't any uh, sealed Atari Jaguars back there, I was happy to get this thing. Yes, this is the arcade version. Uh, and it's one that I don't have a whole lot of experience with, but I've got a lot of experience with the game. So, yeah, I, I, I figure New Paper Mario is good. I just have to admit, between that and Shishima, I really wasn't that stoked for either one of those games, even though I know they're both quality pieces of software, just because they have to be. Um, I hadn't picked it, I picked Shishima up because it had a steel book. I just don't feel a lot of incentive to jump on Paper Mario right now because I'm not going to. I wouldn't start it right now. Right now on Switch, I'm playing Brigandine uh, Legend of Runergia. And if you haven't played that game, dear God, if you like tactics RPGs, Brigandine is the end all say all in tactics RPGs. It's a follow up to a 90s Atlas Brigandine RPG that was on the PS1. And I'm not going to sit here and act pretentious like I already knew that. I had no idea. Never seen that game. It's worth 300 loose on eBay. My God. no. So please no one tell me you had that game. Uh, but yeah, if you're a tactics nut like I am, you got to play Brigandine, man. It is so freaking rad. It's complicated to a fault, yet it still makes so much sense that it won't upset you. So good. And there's a playable demo free on the eShop right now that you can actually get into and probably drop about 10 hours on, and you'll know for sure if you like the game or not. Which is so great the way they do that on a lot of their RPGs on the eShop. There's going to be a physical limited run come out, but it's like, I don't want that really. I mean, I've already bought it digital. I didn't want to wait for that, is my thing. Ninjas. Sealed Jaguar. I just I see so many pickups from people lately that are like, mm, no. Yeah, I don't think you found that. I think you had that, and you want us to think you found that. He won't go up the stairs. Can't climb up there. This doesn't feel like the NES one. And I'm dead. Okay, well, you know what? We're going to go back to the menu, which it gives you this option here, which is great. You don't have to turn the thing off to go back to the menu. That's great. You know, if you found a Jaguar, great. I'm, I'm, and it, I mean, it can happen. It doesn't happen four times a week, though. Some of these people forget that if you're going to fudge your pickups, you need to really have a little bit of modesty in there. I don't know, but maybe you don't, though, because people seem to believe it. I talked about this recently, about how a lot of the HGTV shows are 100% fudged. The real estate's not even real. It's not even for sale, but we watch. Super Robot Wars, Ashcan? I've never played. I don't know anything about it. But if it's a tactics RPG, I can tell you that I would probably like it. Let's look at Bubble Bobble. How great is this? How great is this? Bub and Bob. Fun fact, inside the liner notes of the Morbid Angel Covenant album, Trey Azikthoth actually thanks Bub and Bob in the... <laughs> that always cracked me up. Get up there. A popsicle. Do 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 do. You gotta really get used to these controls. Not they're, not that they're bad, but when you're used to playing it with an NES controller, now I got a stick on the right of buttons. It uh, it does feel a little different. But this looks good and it sounds good. A piece of birthday cake. 
I'm a sucker for food in games. Maybe that's why I've always liked Pac-Man so much. He gets to eat. Wadaga! Bananas. I noticed some anti-aliasing, or maybe that's just a side effect. You know, I'm upscaling this from the uh, cool digital box, you know, to HD. That may be some of it, but I wouldn't doubt if there's some of that just because, I mean, it is what it is. Oh, and I died. You know, the plug and plays, sometimes the versions are not perfect. I mean, I know that we've gotten into that. God, we've got into that with some of the at game stuff. But then I think generally, like on the ROMs that we've added, on the episodes we've done, they've all worked really well, so. Yeah, that's Honest Cap. Not Game of the Year, but right up there. And if it's a good piece of software, it doesn't have to be Game of the Year, but a lot of people were claiming it so before it even came out. And it's like, I'm not sure why you're that amped for this. And maybe the whole feudal samurai era thing just doesn't appeal to me as much as sword shields and dragons do, and then that's just a personal thing. But I wasn't too amped about the game. It may end up being really good, though. I have Bubble Bobble for Friends on the Switch. Great game. Sounds like something I might want to look into. I do not have that on the Switch. There's so much on the Switch, and that's going to tie into my follow-up we do on the Evercade soon. As far as, you know, we got to talk about if you want a handheld, just how much money is it worth having in any one given handheld? Because you got a lot of options out there, not just that. But the Switch is one you probably already own, and I think that's something we forget in handheld land. I mean, I bought this thing because I'm just kind of collecting it, but for six bucks, I can afford to put this on the shelf. And that's just how it is. You're going to love the combat, except I can't figure out how to lock on an enemy. And from what I understood, that game really prides itself on just hanging you out to dry. There are no waypoints. There's no markers. You know, you got to just really make your way. And a hamburger. Get the hamburger. Get the hamburger. Get the hamburger. A watermelon. I want a watermelon. And, you know, I, I think about, you know, Witcher with no waypoints. How fun would that actually be? I don't know. And at some point, it's just like, this is hard just to be hard. I don't know if that adds anything to the game. I don't know if that's addition by subtraction. Maybe it is. You know, what do I know? But... Ah! Ah, pushed me into it. Yeah, you're going to continue to hear a lot about Shishima, and it's like... I need to concentrate here. I'm not going to make it through this. Again, it's just there's so much out right now, I just wasn't really... I felt no urgency to play it, but... Never understood why they put the sticks on the right. I, I don't either, really, because... I mean, that would feel... A lot, I mean, you can get used to this, but that's... And there is no enemy lock. Great. So, yeah, I mean, it may have some really damning issues with the uh, controls, too. But yeah, I don't know why they put the controls on the right. Could not answer that. that that's, that's peculiar. I want to thank everybody in here right now for uh, coming to spend part of your Saturday with me. I was hoping everybody would come by and check it out. Yeah, there's just, the backlog's always going to be full, and there's games that I, I'll admit, I buy, you know, out of an urgency, you know, the whole fear of missing out. I don't want to be the one guy that's not playing it. And as YouTubers, we do have a little bit of a responsibility to kind of know what's going on. I don't try to be this condescending turd on here that acts like he knows everything, and there's plenty of those, but you also don't want to know nothing. You kind of want to know what's happening. You're going to be curious about a game that's got that much heat behind it, but... You know, Last of Us 2, which, again, I'm still not done with, so no spoilers, but almost done. I've took my time on it. Was all that was really on my radar for right now. That's been the focus game for me for this year. The must-have, must-play, oh, look, a martini, game for 2020. And so far, it has not disappointed. Oh, I got you, you turd burglar! Do, 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 turd burglar, you are a turd burglar. I shot him, that's turd sandwiches. 
That is a turd sandwich. A Magok. Give me my fruit. Take the fruit and scoot. I'm always going to have a backlog because I've just collected too much. My, my backlog even stretches into the retro stuff. I've just got so many games. Mainly because I collected so much RPGs over time. There's just not time to play all of these things. This is so great. Okay, no, I did not fall right off the edge. Well, that was a better score. Moving on, we got a lot of stuff to look at here. When you haven't yet finished Temple of Apshai 3, you have a deep backlog. I, I've done the, you know, and we're, it's funny you mentioned that because we're going to do more Apshai right here on the show. I look back and that video has just gone gangbusters for what it is that, you know, that we did on that. That live stream's like going up to like 2,000 views. I'd like to play that TMNT pinball. That looks like a high scale machine right there. But yeah, apparently I'm not the only app shy lover out there. Just realized I hit continue. What is the fairy land? Well, first let's look at the space invaders because that's what this is. And I think this is the version John didn't like. This is the one that they made to sidestep licensing and why they did, I don't know. Because how'd they get the other Taito games if they couldn't do this? But yeah, this looks like the same one that we saw on the at games units. It's not 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 a VCS version. Yeah, there's a lot of heat behind Appshy apparently, and as well there should be. But you don't expect people to care or even know about that, you know? Because honestly, Dungeon Quest, Appshy, that was all 70s games. The trilogy didn't launch till 85. And I bought the trilogy new, and I was new to it in 85. Because, I mean, in 79, I was still in diapers. So, I can only take you so far back. For the rest of that, you can talk to Gen X John. He can. <laughs> he's got your gen x needs covered although i still identify as gen x we are 80 subs from 3k that's a good point um we're on our 3k countdown so if you have a friend that would enjoy the mc mer show send them over here to watch it and keep watching it yourself because I can tell you there is no shortage of great content coming your way in the not too distant future. I've got so much planned. It's going to be absolutely nuts. And as far as your channel being dead in the water, Captain, I've got some ideas for that too. One of which we were kind of talking about earlier. How we go about that next project is going to define potentially moving forward on that and, and a little shot in the arm for us both. Yeah, I swear it's the same version on the At Games one. It just looks a little bit more dull, but it looks like the same one. I'm interested in what Fairyland's story is. I was never a huge Paper Mario fan. I like what it is, but it just never... I guess the... I guess I loved... Leave it to Nintendo. I loved Super Mario RPG, but from there they went into Paper origami i don't know what why why is it always got to be so abstract just give me the dead gum game uh i don't think i've ever played check and pop but if you want to see that one next we'll do that one next if i have i don't remember 
I'm trying to get a bunch of videos finished and I'm going to release them. Well, that sounds like a plan to me. We still got to have a tune up conference, though. I know we haven't got to that yet. Miss Chacken and Mr. Chacken, take back our hearts. Well, I'll certainly do my best. While avoiding mm, use ah to destroy mm and open uh. Freezing uh, then exit from the maze. Seems pretty straightforward. Oh, am I, am I playing? Oh, I'm sorry. I blew myself up. We were, I was talking to Scarlet Sprites about that because he was talking about uh, some of the Taito games that he wasn't as familiar with from an arcade standpoint. And I was telling him about that one that you had and how badass it was. It had Rastan and... Okay. I've apparently missed the point of this entirely. I don't know what those things do. Oh, they turn into the monsters. Those are the spawn points. Oh, okay, so it did. It blew up the edge of it. This is my first exposure to Chack and Pop. Never saw it before. I haven't either. And I'm sure it was in arcades. I've just never seen it before. But this is kind of cool. Once I figure out what I'm supposed to be doing here. Get out of there, Chack and Pop! Oh, he got the heart. Okay, now what? Oh, now there's an exit, right? Oh, Lord. Come on, Chack. Drop a bomb on y'all fools. I'm gonna get myself! That wasn't supposed to roll toward me. I'm not ready to call it yet. I'm just now getting my Chack on. Zombies in the house. I hear you on the working and lurking. Thank you so much for coming in. Fantastic to have you here on the stream. And lurking and working is next to godliness. I do it all the time. There's so many of y'all streams sometimes too that I'm there and you don't even know, but I try to say something if I can. But if I can't even do anything else, at the very least, I will drop in and drop a like because those likes are so important to make sure you have that visibility so that you get those views after the fact. Support. It's a beautiful thing. He throws. It's like, no, the enemy's this way, Chack. That's the training stage, but you'll get the bomb and run. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the I like the whole uh, mechanic of it. I just need to figure out what he's going to do. I need to start streaming again. I would actually recommend against that. We're streaming today because we actually have something to look at. Why does it always come out of his behonkus? He only shoots to the left. We're streaming today because I wanted to take a look at this machine with you, but they're, you know, the random streaming, I just find that it just doesn't do much for a channel. Well, they're going down too. Unless it's something that's going to get views after the fact and still have some kind of a draw to it. Yeah, you know, it just doesn't help you that much. You want any video you make, you want it to be able to make money for you while you're sleeping. That's that's the beauty. And if it can't do that, chances are you need to rethink it. Now, streaming, though, is a community-based thing, and it's fun. And that's coming from me, somebody that has always done it for that reason and enjoys hanging out in other streams for those reasons like you know captain algebra whoever's doing one t-belly it's great just to get in there and shoot the poop with everybody and and those guys are really good at games too man and it's just really great to see them do what they do ah, i wanted to slip in under there hey uh john thank you so much for stopping in dude always great to have you in here and i've got some collaborative stuff coming up with gen x john too as a matter of fact. Lots of stuff going on this year. He 
he won't make those big jumps. It's like he has to... I mean, how could I get in there if he's only going to shoot the to the left and all the enemies are to the right? That's my question. Oh, God, I can't get away from it quick enough. I can't do it. So you can eliminate the eggs, too, I guess, and that's the idea. So let's see. Is that going to blow it up? Yes. And is there a limit to the bombs that he has? So you hope you get as many of them done as you can before you turn that heart loose so there's less to contend with. Oh. No limit. Okay. And what is this cat up here at the top doing? Oh, uh, why am I coming down? I already got the heart. I'm supposed to be going toward the exit, and I ain't. And I can't even get him to go out the exit. Ooh. Oh, I touched it. Oh, it didn't even get to that. So how do I get up there? I mean, in my mind, you have to die and then make a beeline for that to get out. Am I right? If he gets to the edge before you escape, he takes the heart. Okay. You know, I don't hate this. I mean, this is neat. I just, I've, I've never been exposed to it before. I wonder if it's on my arcade stick. Uh, more videos on the arcade stick front coming soon, too. So much coming your way on the show. It's ridiculous. I can't even tell you all about it. I've still got three pickup videos in the hole. I've got so much to do that it's just stupid. Not getting nothing done here. Check. Check's a Lego maniac. Come on. Yeah, that's the limit to how far he can make it. Well, it's him or the bomb. Bomberman meets Mr. Do. That's a good comparison. And I loved me some Mr. Do. Come on, Coleco, are you kidding me? Couldn't get out of there fast enough, Dad, darn it. Get up there. All right, he got it. He's out. I saw that Lego set. I don't know. Legos, they, they're cool, but they're like, they're so expensive. It's just, a, I'm more into them from the aspect of like CM Retro does, where he goes and buys them by the pound at yard sales and stuff. I think that's cool, but as far as collecting $400 sets and stuff, I can't do that. Well, that's cool. Now we know about Jack and Pop. I got to admit, I didn't know about that one. I want to see the fairy tale adventure. What is that all about? The Fairyland story. It feels like there's going to be a, a great sleeper hit here. Shushing. Oh, look at this. So what am I doing? 
Okay. Oh, turning people into cake. I thought the cake was going to be like something I weaponize. Apparently not. Ruben Santos is in the house. Welcome, Ruben. So am I trying to turn all of them into into cakes? Okay, so no. We have to actually get them up here and break the cakes. Oh, I got some kind of a power up. I mean, I can touch them. So you got to make them into a cake and then break the cake. Plop. That's kind of neat. I'm going to turn you into a cake and then we'll see if the cake can break. <laughs> and if you can't, then it just serves as a momentary stun option. Pa Plopa. Pa -pla -pa. Oh, and yeah, I was like, can you drop it on him? Okay, nah, that's what's up. The cake is a lie, yeah. They 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 got they they got us on that one. But we know what we're doing now. This is this is doable. Oh, I should have waited. Now if you get them if you cake them midair, they're done. Shimon. Oh boy. All right, let's get the magic wand. Which I'm still not sure what that does. Is that invincibility? No. Well, we had to find out. We're learning. Okay, so you can also turn the wizards into cakes. Good to know. What do you think of that complete inbox Super Mario Brothers that sold? I think that's... I mean, I don't know what you're thinking when you purchase something like that. More food indeed. You can't have enough food. In fact, I'm going to go fire up the grill as soon as we uh, conclude this live stream. Got some big old beef hot dogs I'm going to do. And we're going to do them with... Uh, my wife's doing her hot dog chili that she does. She does a signature hot dog chili that's got that real thin, like, varsity style consistency. And then I'm going to do up some bacon, too, because I like a good bacon cheese dog. And I like when I have hot dogs to have multiple options, like it's a hot dog bar. I like a slaw dog. I like a brisket dog. I like a slaw dog with brisket. I like a chili dog. I like a chili cheese dog. I like a bacon dog. I like a bacon cheese dog. Ironically, I don't really like real dogs that much. And yet, my daughter forced me to finally get her a dog, and the dog doesn't care for her that much but he has become my spirit animal and this freaking French Bulldog I mean he won't let me go anywhere without him it's the weirdest thing I tried not to like him but I can't help it he's my buddy he was supposed to stay down there the Ouya's is not going it's just not. I mean, we're no further along with it. And the reason, uh, the ball's kind of in the community's court. I'm hoping, A, the initial video does well. Because that's not what the video was supposed to be. We were supposed to play the stuff that was online, or excuse me, offline on it. And then try to get some help from the community on the other stuff. There's nothing on the dadgum thing. And you know that because you watched the video. And that's not what it was supposed to be. And Roaming Dan confirmed this when he was messaging me about it earlier. He's like, I just wanted that because it was going to have Final Fantasy. Fantasy 3 on and I was like I knew it I knew that was their that was their sales pitch and I was like am I remembering that right no I'm totally remembering that right that's what it was they said oh but Final Fantasy 3 is gonna be on it first who cares uh, already had that digitally and physically both on the actual cartridge and my Wii U or Wii eShop but it's like okay uh, maybe that's a sales pitch I don't know but I, that was their sales pitch at one point and it's just funny that that's all that well we're gonna have Final Fantasy 3 on it it's like, well that's not even your game and okay but the whole thing was that you know can we make software and upload it and that's kind of an empowering thing to people at that point at, and at any time 
but they really did not future proof that thing and then razor bought the property just to rumple it up and throw it in the trash and i don't get the whole reason for doing that because they weren't going to make any money all like that anyway oh the hot dog choices i'm gonna tell you and these are the big old biggins make you blush they're so big like ned flanders telling maude you know how I feel about footlongs. <laughs> Real dogs taste like chicken. I don't know what they taste like, but there's like, you know, my wife likes Oscar Mayer, just the lips and butthole hot dogs. And I like like a, I like like a Hebrew National or a Nathan's Famous. I like a Beef Frank. But I can prepare both to where they're so good you'll slap your mother. I like cutting like diagonal cuts in them so that they get real good and cooked inside. So there's a little bit of a crispness on the outside of the dog, but to where the dog's not overcooked. And yeah, I just, I love, I love that. I don't know what the significance of the wand is. She's flashing and literally does nothing different. It does suck, but we're not out yet. You know, again, this video's new. I mean, after a week, I think we'll really know if we can expect any help on this or not. It seems like there's still a pretty active Ouya community out there. They have their own community servers. And I got to figure out what's on those servers, what we could potentially benefit from on those servers, and if we can access said servers in the event we're able to bypass this update. I watched a couple different people's videos, including one from Spawn Wave Media, and I thought, you know, he's one of these six figure sub guys surely he did something with this because he did one of these last year and at the time maybe the update was still live because they shut it down last year but he just took it apart and broke it into pieces and said what all was in it which i mean i guess it was interesting but it uh it didn't really tell me anything about what i needed to know unfortunately and i think most videos out there are not going to tell me that because until this year it wasn't an issue so nobody's gonna have dealt with that yet so it's the irony of knowing that a, a used unit would have been the better and actually of course more affordable thing to pick up now I could buy a used Ouya probably for 20 bucks and just know that I have a brand new controller without any Cheeto fingers on it rejoice in that and maybe just you know enjoy what that has on it but what are we talking about here the whole thing with the Ouya around this household started up because, um, oh, I don't know, Captain, did it? I don't see it. I mean, you're a mod on here. You shouldn't be banned. Oh, and they, they jumped me while I was looking at your comment. Yeet. But um, I lost my train of thought. You, Ouya. Uh, Molly has been talking a lot about the Ouya because both her and my son are really into Amazing Frog. My kids love that freaking game. And Ama Amazing Frog apparently got its roots on the Ouya. And there's all kind of Ouya Easter eggs in the game. Like the frog will find the controller and he'll run around with it. No, the game's terrible, but who cares? Uh, she's like, oh yeah, we have to have that for the collection. And maybe the original Amazing Frog is on it. Well, maybe it can be. Um, I love that she can get on their heads and not die. That's awesome. But, yeah, I kind of bought it for the kids, too. This is a different one. What does this one do? The same thing? Kaplapa. This is a cool little game. It wasn't what I was expecting, but... This is kind of cool. Oh, no fair, the wizard! Yeah, I don't see a deleted comment. And you're a mod, so... You should have free reign. I don't have any... I mean, I've got some protected words on there, but... Who knows, man? I'm, I'm never surprised. I really am not. All right, let's go on to another game. We are still doing good on time here, so let's see. Let's do some alpine skiing. Or maybe should we go tubing? Tubing or skiing? Jester's here. Welcome, Jester. I'm doing pretty fair for a uh, for a Saturday. We can do both. Let's go tubing, then we'll go skiing. Water, water, then solid water. Sweet. Jesus, what's going on here?
tube it. Oh, we're not going tubing. We're doing something with a tube, and there is some serious tearing on the screen. Oh, I won't enjoy this at all. <laughs> but we're here. Let's take a look at it. Like John was saying, there's some aliasing and that's just not. Okay, come on now, come on. Okay, this is cool. I, I like this, but I'm definitely not going to be good at it. This is kind of neat. Okay, come on, we gotta get some tube action going here. Oh lord. This guy looks like he's squatting a duke over here. Was it a foot long? <laughs> Goblins in the house. Welcome, Goblin215. Good to see you on the show, my friend. I hope you're doing well. A lot of y'all haven't had a chance to talk to in a long time because we just haven't been doing any streaming, but... Okay, so I officially suck at this, but I get what they're trying to do here, and I don't hate this. Ah! Okay, well, that's too, but that's kind of cool. I could see getting into that. I've been doing pretty good, man. we just really been focused on uploads and production, and we just haven't been streaming every week. But we're going to probably be back to streaming Thursday nights. I've got some stuff coming up with some publishers that we're going to be looking at, uh, new releases, some early releases, stuff like that. We've got a couple deals in the pipes there to where we're going to kind of, it'll kind of dictate the need to get back to doing some streaming. But still no more than once a week, really. We're still focused on our uploads. New episodes every Friday at 4.30. We're going to see how that time slot works. Uh, just got a lot of stuff that we got to cover. A lot of great videos, a lot of productions, a lot of would-be master crafts in the works that are just kind of in the production backlog that I need to make sure and get out, you know, for the channel's sake and for you guys. Streaming does take a lot of time, and, it, you know, you look up and if it's working for you, great. And if it's just not contributing to growth, then you need to decide what of it actually has and where you can work that in and just not let it, you know, run the entire show unless it is the entire show. And that's fine too. But at one point I was doing so much of it and it, you know, I think, again, I figured out what of it was working. It was the day one reviews. It was early releases. It was just stuff that was trending because it, it could continue to work, you know, when it wasn't live. So just had to make some executive decisions here in the interest of growth and to make sure that I'm giving you the best quality product I can give you because for a while there, it started to feel like I wasn't doing that and I knew we could do more. And the production's only going to get better. We're looking at camera upgrades, audio upgrades, PC upgrades. A lot of stuff in the next year is going to happen on the show. Right, we're trying to get points, I think, from going in between these things. Whoa, I was going to take a chance. Uploads are always king on this platform. That's the thing. I mean, while you can stream on this platform, it's not a streaming platform. You can stream on it. It will not be without its challenges. And it's great for community sake because, again, I love talking to you guys live. I got so hooked on that that I looked up and, you know, other videos weren't getting done and... I think it was just because I didn't really have what I needed to make the videos I wanted to make at that time. The streams ended up being the higher quality product than anything I could have brought you as far as an upload standpoint at that point in my journey here. But things have changed and now I'm starting to see things shape up how I want them to look and to where I feel like the presentation is, I don't know, worthy of your time, you know, to look at. That's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> Tell that to people. I don't know. There's always going to be those big channels that are the exception and not the rule. And it's just, I don't know. We can only do what we know it's going to work. What's going to work on it. Because it's different for every channel. And you know me, I'm an analytics nut. I like to look at that for other people and just kind of see if I can decipher on their end what's working for them if they don't already know. Because it's just fun to look at. It's, it's a game. And it's not one you can always win. And that's kind of frustrating, but... 
Yeah, it is difficult. NAGC is in the house. Dropping a light, heading into work. You know, we were talking, it's funny you say that. We were talking about that earlier. It's like, duty calls. We've all got stuff we got to do. But we can drop in on these live streams for a minute. We can drop a like. Those support, that support is so important. Now, of course, I love having you here and I love hanging with you. So that's great. But, you know, there's so many streams that I just pop into real quick and drop a like. It's like, oh my God, I'm driving, I'm working, I'm doing something I can't watch right now. But I want you to have that like because, A, I like you. And, B, I want you to have that visibility because, like we talk about, streams working for you after the fact is only going to happen if the visibility is there. And, a, and an offline stream can be just as effective as any upload if the initial interaction is there so that the algorithm will push it so that people can see that stream again that we talked about temple of apshai earlier that streams up to almost 2,000 views i didn't have 2,000 viewers live on that i had you guys hanging out with me and it was awesome but then you look back and 2,000 people have watched it what when did that happen so it's those kind of things so yeah dropping those likes i can't thank you enough for that and i'm so glad you're here glad all of y'all are here thanks so much for coming and hanging out with me a little bit on this fine saturday it's been a while since we looked at anything. We scored this thing up in LJ, Georgia at the consignment shop. I was like, man, we got an episode here. This thing is going to be so much fun to look at. Even though you're just watching me ski in the trees. <laughs> yeah, showing that support, man. That's the only way any of us are going to come up out here. Is just showing each channel some love. We'll be in there for each other and dropping those likes and... You know, and, and watching where we can and sharing too. You know, I, I try to share anytime I see something where I really see a channel just going above and beyond on something. That's a genuine thing for me that I'm saying, hey, you need to look at this. Look what they've done here. Gaming Off the Grid just did a Wii U video, which I got a lot of flack for the one I did that, you know, they went a little bit different route with theirs, made some different points. I had a lot of Switch people coming at me thinking that I was an anti-Switch guy, which I'm not. I'm just trying to tell you that there's still a great Wii U out there. But uh, Gaming Off the Grid, as always, did a great presentation and pointed out a lot of the games that really are the definitive versions of themselves on Wii U, regardless of what ports they have or will get. And that's an important aspect to look at, too. Something I didn't touch on on mine. My two biggest points I made in my argument was we still don't have Call of Duty or Madden on the Switch. Sorry, we don't. That says something. It just does. And you can say 2K, you can say all this other stuff, but... Sorry, that speaks volumes, you know. The Wii U is what's up. My live streams don't get many people. It's hard to... Okay, so the way that works, and I know we're reviewing this machine here. I wasn't going to turn this into a YouTube seminar, but... Okay, let's talk about that because, you know, you're going to develop an audience eventually. And by that, I mean the people that come by to, whoa, he's going fast, to watch you stream. But that you'll find that that's all that it gets. And then when it goes offline, that's it. It just sits there. And then if anybody sees that recap in their feed later on and they pass over it, oh, well, they're not live now, so I'm just not going to watch that. Then it stops recommending you to whoever passes that in the feed. Those are those, that's that CTR, that click-through ratio that's not going to be there because they don't click it. So that's where it gets into trouble if you're streaming all the time. And if you're not seeing growth, that could be why. It, it, it can be a detriment. A Ginny Kamalishisakles. <laughs> I know. I was so excited for the Wii U when it came out. I had mine pre-ordered, had it paid for, picked it up day one. I can tell you so many stories about the weeks that followed, what was going on in the retail world, uh, you know, scalpings of the, of the Wii U's, or a lack thereof once everyone realized that the white ones were not desirable because of their low... Uh, memory size the thing is they are desirable and they're only like 80 bucks at GameStop if you can find a store that has one if your local store they're not going to ship them but if you can find one that has one and you can stick a 64 gig flash drive in the front I just put a 16 gig in mine because mine's a 32 but I just needed a little bit more room for updates so I stuck it in there and it formats and you instantly got more memory so that's easy enough so if you only have an 8 gig Wii U that's okay if that's all you can find I would still pick one up and have it for that all right. Birdie King. I'm guessing that's golf. As in a birdie? Or is it like a real bird? 
But yeah, I mean, we had the whole wave of, oh, well, we use trash. Let's break them on camera for views. And Switch is the second coming. I wasn't ready for Switch when it dropped. I'll tell you that. I was like, God, I don't want to buy another system. It ain't going to do nothing. It ain't going to do anything more than I need the, the, the Wii U to do. And it still doesn't, really. It's It's portable. But that's it. As far as it goes. I do like it, but because it's it. It's there. I mean, you're not playing the current thing, then, yeah. Oh, God, these games are always so cryptic. I literally just hit the ball. How did I do that? You just hold it, and then it hits, and now we're in a bunker? I'm confused. And the Switch is great. It just, I argue that it wasn't... It wasn't a necessity. We didn't have to have it. They made another console to con to compete, and we weren't ready for that. We didn't need it. On the green. Now I know what it's doing, but... Oh my god, how do I know what direction it's going to go in? But the people that hated on the Wii U afterwards, that's what I didn't understand. Where was this hate coming from? And I know where it was coming from. They felt like the existence of the Wii U and the 3DS or continued support of those was going to be a detriment to the development of future Switch titles. But I think we know that's not what happened. Metroid Prime has already been delayed again from what I understand. That game's been in production longer than freaking GTA 5 and we don't even have screenshots on it yet to my knowledge. We don't even have a working concept. So it's like, their whole, what they're stuck on is what they're stuck on. It's not support for other consoles that's doing that. The bottom line is there's not enough first party stuff on the Switch to stand above the Wii U yet. There's just not. And these ones that they're making could have run on the Wii U. And that's it. That's all there is to it. There's no argument to be made. It is what it is. Paper Mario Origami King? Come on, bruh. You guys can't run on a Wii U? Yeah, it can Wii U had a Paper Mario. All the consoles did. It can run it. It can run it, and then it runs all this other current-gen stuff like crap. 720p. Muddy 30 frame per second. Smeared-looking Vaseline-rubbed images of stuff that if you played on PS4 would look great. So it's like... So there again, it, those, I don't even need those games to be portable either. You know, unless, I'm playing Brigandine on there. That's a hardcore tactics RPG. It's great that that's portable. And the graphics on that are not going to be like Doom quality. It's a tactics RPG. So it's okay. You can play that in 720 and who cares. But I mean, I'm... Even, you know, I gotta eat my I gotta eat my own words and be a little hypocritical in that. Okay, even if they did make Madden and Call of Duty, I'm not buying them on the Switch. So, so well, then why does it matter? Like, well, it matters that there isn't a need or an ability to offer those. That's what it matters, and that's a decision by those third parties, not by Nintendo, as far as I know. And no, they and they and I love them all the more for that. I love that they do their own thing, no matter how wackadoo it ends up being, but. Boy, we're really on a tangent here. Meanwhile, this golf game is butt-holy. I mean, you can even put my golfer on the screen. I'm literally having to hold the, in the direction I want it to go and then... Release. And it... No, I don't like this. I mean, they've seen other golf games, right? Where's my player? It's just the ball. All right, what haven't we looked at? Puznik and Kicks. Yeah, Birdie King. That's not even a Birdie Duke. Might be Bird Duke. Yeah, and I like Black Box Golf. It's not bad. Not the best golf game. I mean, NES Open was probably one of the best on that console. Nintendo did have the tech during this. Okay, so first of all, Generational Gamer is here. Welcome, Double G. So glad you're here. Super Nintendo got the benefit of this. It's the same thing they always do. Switch did it too. They show up late. They show up mid-gen. And boom, here it is. Of course, now in the Switch's 
interest, though, it's still underpowered. They're not winning the race doing that anymore. But at the time Super Nintendo came out, yes, it, it, it is still definitively, by the numbers, the best 16-bit console, even though I prefer Genesis 110% because of the library. But yeah, for a minute there, it was just Genesis and Turbo Graphics. That's all that there was. And it was a very brief moment, but it was a moment. And I tell y'all, I remember being made fun of on the bus and at school because I bought a Genesis and, oh man, no, Turbo Graphics is going to be the thing. You bought the wrong, you bought the wrong console. You're a dork. Well, we all know how that panned out. And I love Turbo Graphics too. Don't get me wrong. Marilyn Monroe dropping five bucks in the name of Bird Dookie, and that's what's important. Because if it was five dollar for any other reason, I would just I would be as thankful. But I am this much more thankful because it's in the name of Bird Dookie. Can I get a hallelujah for Bird Dookie? Thank you so much, Marilyn. That is fantastic. Uh, yeah, late is what they were known for. And, you know, I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying they kind of lay back, see what everyone else is doing, and then they ante up. And it's just kind of funny how that was all... God, what is this? This does not look fun in the least. Game over? Good. That looks terrible. I've heard of Kicks, never played it. That doesn't look fun. Who's laughing now with the TurboGrafx-16? And what's funny is if they kept it, they actually ended up owning something really cool. I ended up with a box TurboGrafx-16 that I bought in the 90s at a yard sale for 10 bucks. That's my big fish story. I know I tell it a lot. And it was 99, so to be fair, people were throwing these things out by then. And, you know, we love TurboGrafx-16 and we love Neo Geo stuff now because of how exotic they are. It's not something you see every day. Everybody got a dadgum NES. I had to have one, yeah. Kix is cool with a trackball. What was I doing, though? I, I'll look at it again. Coach me through it. What am I supposed to do here? It looked like Missile Command, but it was glitching out. But, yeah, I mean, the Super Nintendo sound, in some cases, was better. And graphics was always just more colorful. It put forth more of a beautiful image than the Genesis ended up doing. But Genesis has those obscure RPGs and the renovation games. And if I have to pick one on a desert island for the rest of my dadgum life, it's got to be Genesis because I'm a Sega guy. Marilyn says, the idea behind Kicks is to fill in the board by drawing lines. Well, surely I can do that, right? Am I drawing them? I have a cursor. That did something. I think I died when I hit that, right? Am I trying to bounce the line off of my cursor? Oh God, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? You have to try and acquire as much space as you can by cutting off the room and trapping the light bar? This may be above my pay grade. Oh, no, here it is. Okay, now it's drawing a line. The SNES had a larger color palette than the Genesis until the 32X. You know what? I didn't buy the 32X either when it came out. I waited till it went on sale. And on sale, it went, too. Oh, Captain Retro is calling. Hello. Yeah. He's coaching me through kicks via phone right now. Okay. Gotcha. Roger that. Ow. You want to draw in smaller sections so you don't hit the light bars. Like that? Like I drew that? Oh, it blew up anyway. Can it not hit the bar? Yeah, I bought it on sale for 20 bucks at a Toys R Us. They had a wall of them. Please get these out of here. 20 bucks a piece. I'm going to have to study up on kicks. You've got better things to do with your Saturday than, wa Saturday than watch me suck that bad at that game. But I agree, that's very unique. And I probably wouldn't hate it if I knew exactly what was going on. Puznik is the only one we haven't looked at. And we're getting close to the end of it, of our stream time today. So I want to make sure we've taken a look at everything. Yeah, even when the 32X, when I bought it, it was like, I don't need this. But it did have some very cool versions of some games on it. 
Uh, Virtual Fighter was great to have on it. I believe that was the pack in with it at that point. That came with it. And at a yard sale a few years back, I found a box 32X under a lawnmower. True story. And it had a bunch of games in it. So a lot of the ones I had, I was able to scavenge. Complete square erecting before you get touched. Ooh. Or the monsters eat your line you were making. Man, that's... That's rough. I like the idea, though. I'd have to practice that a little bit. Problem level 1-1. One, one. Oh, God. What am I doing here? What does that say? Akangal Gaves? What does that say? Oh, I got a... I got a... Okay, so I have these I can put out? What is the deal with this? I never saw a kicks in the arcade. Quicks or whatever you want to call it. There's no U, so I'm calling it... I have no idea what that says. These puzzle games, man, I don't know. I've, I've never been one to enjoy puzzle games. I love Tetris. I love Columns. I think their music is part of what does it for me. And yes, we're going to play one more round of Legend of Kage before we're done. But other than that, puzzle games don't get me that much. And puzzles in games get on my nerves. Like games like uh, Last Guardian and, you know, Rhyme or Ream, whatever that is. I don't get into games like that. I pronounced it Quicks, but I think it's Kicks. Yeah, Kick, because there's no U. So I'd have to say phonetically it's Kicks. But man, we've had a good time here today so far. Uh, this was really fun to look at, and it won't be the last one of these we look at. I'm going to be on the lookout for these, man, because they control really good, and the games don't look half bad on them, really, for what it is. I mean, I wouldn't want to pay $30 for one, but you can bet if I see these out in the wild, I'm going to pick them up, because the MSI ones are not this high quality. And, you know, and they're also NES ROMs on them. Again, you get into those weird licensing things. We're like, oh, arcade experience comes home. It's like, nah, dude, this is the home version. What you talking about? This ain't it. But this is it. And this is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm going to stab you. I jumped right into that one. What a boob. Letters in English can have the three distinct sounds. Keep that in mind. That's good to know. The more you know. Listen to that metal. Listen to that cold steel ring. Ah. Oh, there's the big boss. Dropped him. What I got? One ninja down. Captain Algebra was streaming some Master System last night. I need to do more of that. I love playing Master System. You always remember your first. And while the Atari ST was technically my first way to play games in the home, my first home console was the Master System and will always be my favorite just because of straight up nostalgia. No other reason. God, the screen tearing is brutal. Oh, I ate it. I'm not ready for one either. I mean, but the thing is, is I'll probably get it, but... I mean, really, we, we're seeing games as incredible as Shushima and Last of Us 2 right now, and it's like... You really need something more to, you need something more powerful than this. I don't know what to tell you. There, you got to walk into the steps and then get shot in the peanuts with a star and die. Dad, come it. Well, you know what? This was a great stream. And I want to thank every single one of you for coming to hang out 
and checking this thing out with me on the show. I hope I hopefully we'll find more of them. First, I got to figure out what all different ones there are. Again, I know there's a Pac-Man slash Namco one. But I'm impressed with the quality, man. And for six bucks, we had a good stream today. We had a look at some really cool games. And I'm actually putting a lot of these out in my garage with my little TV kiosk out there, my CRT, with the other arcade cabinets. So we're trying to make like an 80s hangout room. And these are just kind of fun to have out there because they plug right into the AV in the front. And then you're off to the races, provided you have fresh batteries. And who wouldn't have fresh batteries in an 80s playroom? So fantastic. I thank all of y'all for hanging out. And for all of you watching the recap later on, I hope you can drop a like on this video. I hope that you can subscribe to the MC Mer Show and be a part of our nation because we're rising with all the fantastic things we do right on the show. You need to be a part of it. Make sure that you smack that notification bell so you're always the first to know when new content goes live because you know that I love making it for you right here on the show. Thank you, Marilyn, for that donation. That was absolutely fantastic in the name of Bird Dookie. And I got to tell you, that's the first donation in the name of Bird Dookie I've ever had. Makes it extra special. My son has the one shaped like Pac-Man. It's a whole... I, yeah, I keep seeing that one. I still see it in stores. And when I, when I finally see it for a closeout price, I'm not going to pay 20 for it. But when I see it for a price I'd pay, I'll add that one to it. Because it's a big Pac-Man head and that makes me happy. I think we're done for this Saturday. But again, this was fantastic. If you had a good time, drop a like. Make sure that you share this with a friend if they have not yet seen this machine. And if there's somebody that would enjoy the games that are on this machine, maybe they would purchase one of these machines. Maybe they would enjoy the machine. Call, call a friend up and tell them how much they like the machine. See if the friend has the machine. Go to the friend's house. Spend the night playing the machine with the friend. Things that we love to do and talk about right here on the show. Make sure if you're watching the recap, you leave me a comment in the comment section about everything that you saw here today because you know that I love getting a conversation going with you right here on the MC Mer Show, something that we do a lot of. MC Mer signing off for this spectacular Saturday. Thanks each and every one of you again, and I will see you all again on the next one.